And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. We're welcoming Mary Pat Gokey from Frontline Ministries. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. How are you? Good. Thank you for being here. My uh, pleasure. First of all, some people might be new in town and sure. not familiar with Frontline Ministries. Tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, my husband, Bill, and I are the directors of Frontline Ministries International in Jackson Township. And we're the, the pastors of Frontline Worship Center, a local church as well in Jackson Township. And we're a local expression of the Lord's love and love to share the gospel of Jesus Christ here and around the world. I love that you're saying Frontline International in Jackson Township. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because one is like so global and the other is like our backyard. It's right. They so go together. They Absolutely. really do hand in hand. Yeah. So when you are saying international, you're not kidding. Talk no. about some of the places where you minister. We've been in many different countries for the last 21 years. And we just really feel that the Lord says, bloom where you're planted here in Jackson Township, locally, outreach, everywhere, and then you'll impact globally. So we've been to many different nations, and we raise up teams. <clears throat> we operate as a, a family and, and just invite many people to come into our family to be able to share this gospel overseas. And we just think that this is such a special time to live, knowing that Jesus is coming back, and we want everyone to hear the gospel of the kingdom. Where have you been most so, recently? Oh, most recently. Well, myself, I just returned from three weeks in Mozambique, Africa in mm-hmm. July. We have a team headed up for Ghana oh, in a couple of weeks, and then we're heading to Brazil in January and looking forward to India and perhaps Indonesia, Singapore. We're just kind of working things out for the spring, and then we're going to continue on. You often hear people say, oh, you know, you just don't see those New Testament kind of miracles anymore. (laughs) And then you hear things happening around the world and go, wow, that just sounds like right out of the New Testament. What kinds of things have you gotten to see? I have been so fortunate to see the hand of the Lord move all over the world. I've seen so many people receive instant healing, and the Lord works in many different ways. Mm. Seen blind eyes open, seen deaf people just instantly be able to hear And receive Jesus after that, the lame walking. We've seen a a baby in the womb come back to life. It's just crazy. It's been amazing, amazing privilege to be part of the way the Lord loves to demonstrate his love. But even last couple weeks ago, one young man in our service was listening to the word being preached and was instantly healed in the middle of Mm. the gospel being preached. And the testimony was actually preaching from Acts and he was healed in his ankles. And it was like, oh, my goodness. It was amazing. Not even asking for it. No. It was just the power of right. the word. The power of the word. It was very strong. It happens in worship a lot. This was this was very interesting. It's happened before overseas, and we've seen it. But this was so strong. His ankles were so weak. He didn't even want to get out of the car and walk into the church. And he had had a problem for several weeks. And he was just instantly touched by the power of the Lord and power of the word. I'm sure somebody's driving right now going, wait, wait, did I hear that <laughs> That's right? really true. I know. I, I said, let me get my cell phone out. Like, Come over here and jump up and down and oh. run around. And so I you know, Seriously, take it. us to that scene for a yeah. person who is blind, what they are like when suddenly they're seeing. For someone who's suddenly hearing who has never heard mm-hmm. before, take us to what I that's will. like. I will. There's so many different scenarios that I've been privileged to be part of. I've been in villages. I've been in in, in per, people's homes in different countries. It doesn't matter where it is. When the Lord shows up, he's no respecter of persons or places. Mm. And the presence of God just releases such a strong healing power and anointing because that's who Jesus is. Many people just break into tears or want to know who did this <laughs> and receive Jesus. Mm-hmm. And others who are watching who have perhaps had been skeptical will say, I want to know this Jesus too, because it is him. He is Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer. And when we present this to to the world, how can they resist him? He's just so beautiful. This happened in my dad's house the other day. The Tell us about it. Yeah. This um, young lady who's taking care of my elderly father was really having a hard time. She couldn't touch her toes. She was thinking of back surgery. I'm not sure how she's doing today. But I said, hey, can I pray for you? She said, sure. I laid hands on her on her lower back, Mm -hmm. and she felt the power of God. She felt heat. She went out in the kitchen, came back, and she was crying in front of my dad, looking at this. And she says, I could not do this before, and she was touching her toes. Mm. I was like, what? So we just have to be ready to extend the gospel of the kingdom because he's the healer. We just have the privilege of partnering with him. 
we read it and we it sounds logical as you're reading it in the <laughs> yeah, Bible. And then right. why why are we so stunned when we find out about it happening yet today? Well, I think when we read in Acts, we think, wow, that was then. And some people may have the idea that it stopped at that time. This surely is not the case. Mm. And the Lord says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then the end will come. He says, go make disciples of all nations. And he says, and when you go, preach the kingdom, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you've received, now freely give. Mm -hmm. And he's commissioned us to go do that. And he said, you will do greater works because I go to be with the Father. I'm going to prepare a work and a place for you. I'm prepared the works for you to do here, rather. And I'm preparing a place for you. And I will send you another helper. His name's Holy Spirit. So he lives inside of every believer. Yeah. So... From your opinion, from what, where you are, is this activity increasing? Are we seeing more and more and more yeah. of these amazing things that God's doing and moving? I really believe so. We've been overseas for so many years. We've seen things here as well. But yes, I am seeing this happen more often in the workplace, in the schools, on the streets. We, we go to the streets or we go to places people call the streets or into places where there's a lot of physical, emotional, spiritual need around Canton area, Maslin area. And we're seeing people respond to the gospel and just say, sure, if we'll step out and say, you know, I really believe Jesus heals today and he wants to touch you. Can I pray for you? He's showing up. We're seeing it happen a lot. Wow. We're expecting it and we're raising our children in our church to believe the same. They're just real simple Mm -hmm. and they'll pray for people and they get healed. Isn't that crazy? It, here's a <laughs> chicken so and an egg question for you. Is okay. it that they're accepting Jesus and then the healing comes mm-hmm. or they get healed and say, whoa, who did this? Yes, I'll accept Jesus. So which comes first? We see both, wow. actually. It really depends on the situation. And we ask people sometimes, do you, beginning, do you know Jesus? No, I don't. Well, let me tell you about him. He loves you so much. He really is drawing you into his family. Can I share my history and my feeling and thought in my the truth that he has become to me with you and i and they say yes many times and whether it's on an airplane or it's in the supermarket and then the lord just leads into what their needs are and ask if i can pray for them or someone else would ask that other times i might just be walking down the street whether it's in you know you're at church in jackson township or you're at home and he may give you a, a sense of what needs to happen and so someone might speak it or you might even have an impression in your mind and that's happened to me before as well. Mm-hmm. It's like, why am I sensing there's an ear problem here? So I might ask them, mm-hmm. hey, are your ears okay? No, really, I it buzzes all the time or they buzz. And I'll pray for them, they'll get healed. So I just, oh, just, just trying to rely on the Lord. It's his voice, it's his power, it's his strength. And really back off and trust him and just believe. He says, just believe me it and is, take a step. It's his power, it's it his is. strength. But you are a cool person to hang around with. Well, I would just say, you know, I mean, it's, it's especially if you're not feeling God. well, hang around well, with Mary Pat. Well, I mean, really, it's it's just it's just trusting Him and stepping out. I mean, I've seen a lot of different things and other, you know, and I know that it's not up to me. So if something doesn't happen the way I think I would like to see, I say, mm-hmm. well, I'm not in charge of the world, uh, right? And <laughs> it's Your will, but I I know there's no sickness in heaven, mm-hmm. and so I call and enjoy to invite heaven to come to earth through the person of the Holy Spirit. You say you've seen this so often that you've come to expect it now. Have you always been this bold? Does this come with spiritual maturity over the years? Or <laughs> oh my gosh. can you think of a time when you yes. would have been reluctant to say to someone, can yeah. I pray for you? Well, when I was a new believer and I started reading the scriptures and really understood for the first time, there's healing today. I hadn't really understood that, known that, seen that. And so... I remember talking to the Lord and saying, so um, I'd like to learn and know everything there is to know and do when it deals deals with healing and deliverance. So I'm going to step out and and everything you've got, I'd like to receive if that's okay with you. I mean, kind of very childlike, uh, you know, posture before the Lord, not childish, but childlike. Yes. And he spoke to me and he said, okay. He said, are you willing to count the cost and pay the price? And I heard that. And I was, you know, I sat in my room and I remember going, yes, I I didn't know what that meant. So there have been, it's been a wild ride, but I really believe the Lord says, you trust me, I'm going to teach you 
who I am and take you into a place of deep personal connection with me. And that's my desire to just know him more. You mentioned children and your own children and your whole family. Frontline Ministries has been a family affair, hasn't it? It's a this <laughs> well, is we operate a, as the, a family, the family job, well, <laughs> the family yeah. business. I, yeah, we operate as a family, and we 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 have a, a lot of strong families in Frontline, mm-hmm. and they're building this great legacy for for their future. So we see these little ones being brought up to see that this is just normal, normal talk to Jesus, and He talks back. Mm-hmm. And go talk to someone and tell them, and and they're going to listen to you. Or if they don't, it's okay. Love them anyway. Yes. You know, and just develop a, a deep personal God connection for them. Help them step into that so Jesus becomes real and that they can step out and do crazy things. So, you know. I know there are people listening saying, oh, my goodness, I want to be a part of this. Um, Great, come. And yes, <laughs> we're going to be telling them about a wonderful conference yeah, coming up yeah. in our second half. But before sure. we do... For people who just want to be a part of some of your mission trips, sure. how do peop- can anyone come along? We just invite anyone who has a hunger and a desire to share the gospel of the kingdom, who desires holy- holiness in their life and purity in their heart, connection, intimacy with Jesus, to come and, and connect with us and we'll see what God will do. Because really, he he's drawn to uh, the places where people are dependent on him. We, we mm-hmm. want to be more and more. We're not trying, there's nobody's show, there's nobody who's a, a lone ranger or anything like that. We do this together, we rely and depend on him, and we love interdependence. So that's our heart. What does it look like to go? Um, what kinds of things do you <laughs> do once you're there? Uh, well, depends on where we are. Mm-hmm. Depends on the, the venue that the Lord provides. I know the for the teams going to Ghana, which I might be on. This is in mid uh, beginning of November. We have our Ghana team. My husband's going, and I'm still considering it. But we have land there, and um, we're building up an area with tw- on 22 acres that the Lord gave us. Um, um, a chief of another persuasion who did not know Jesus gave mm-hmm. us land, didn't want Jesus, gave us land, and then got saved after that. Wow! So we're building. We have Kingdom Bible School there, and we have pastors and leaders come in every year, and we minister to them. And we also go out into villages. Now, this is an African type of trip. There's other types. And so people have opportunities to to step into a completely different culture in a third world country and see the unbelievable happen right in front of their eyes. Do you work with translators? How does a person pack? I'm I'm very (laughs) practical when it comes to these kinds of things. Well, you have to be. Yes. Tell us how to really prepare for it. In the beginning, we said, help. I don't know. (laughs) But we're a little more seasoned, so we have some ideas of Mm -hmm. how to do that and how to help train up people to know how to join our teams and um, see what the best would be for them. So we have mission training weekends. Great. For we, you know, we do have training in our facility as well to help equip people um, to be able to go. And we say go lower, meaning offer yourself to Jesus, because mm-hmm. that, it, the heart is what he's looking for. And then the rest falls into place. And we don't want to get tied up with the practical side. However, we know it's a, a very important part of it. So we make we are very practical people as well, but we want to flow with the Lord. Um, and see how he's leading something. We might have a change in a venue five minutes before. And that's happened to me where I was leading a team in Mozambique, and I got a call and I heard, hey, MP, I need you to really think about going over here. I said, oh, sure, when? Five minutes. (laughs) I want you to lead a pastor's conference. Okay, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Because I knew it was the Holy Spirit, and I trust the people we're with. And um, we know a little bit of Portuguese, and they know more. And so we do have translators as well to help us. And I said to the team, hey, guys, we're shifting gears, but they're flowing with us. So there's a lot of change in interpersonal uh, needs that people seem to hold on to to protect themselves, where people are learning, you know what, if I let go and let God, he's going to take care of these details. Got in there and healing a healing revival seemed to ensue oh, wow. after many were saved. And this is where a lady's baby came back to life. Because oh, honestly, I was in the, the van and I in the bus and I just said, Lord, this is in five minutes. So my heart is ready, ready to go. Yes. Do you want to tell me anything? And he spoke to me and he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm-hmm. And that's all I heard. Nothing more, nothing less. So we pulled in. It's like, okay. 
And so I picked up the microphone shortly after whatever happened, and they invited me to continue on. And so after preaching the gospel and giving the message, whatever it was, then this gal came up and a baby had moved in her womb for several several months and the baby had been dead. Oh, my. And you know what? Honestly, Susie, it was crazy. I felt the Lord say, just put your hands. I'm going to do something. Mm-hmm. And I put my hands on her belly. I had never done this before. And the whole belly shook like this, oh, like jello. Wow. Tears start coming down. And because of a certain schedule that they had, they invited me back the next day. This lady came, testified, and others were there. And just a little revival broke out. Oh. And all kinds of healings took place after that. So God used that as a testimony as well. You know, I, what if I would have said, no, we're not going there? Wow. It's like, oh, my gosh, because I'm not in charge. And I guess that's what I'm trying to stress, yeah, that I'm yeah. learning more and more. It's just not my deal. It's yours, Lord. And so that's that's an example of an African trip. And people would pray with us, and they're, they're taught how to pray for healing mm-hmm. and what deliverance might look like. And we've been out mm. in the bush, not in a pastor's conference for the, our Brazil trip in January, we work in the favelas there primarily, and that's a very poor slummed area, and we're working in um, Sao Paulo. And we started a, a little center of worship there, and we go every year to these places and then expand the places that God calls us. And we have um, clubs that we've started. One's called a Holy Club that is just an amazing thing that's raising up young people who are learning about the holiness of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then they'll have worship and soaking in God's presence and miracles are breaking out, mm. and they're having visions. They're seeing things. They're growing in intimacy with Jesus, mm-hmm. and they're becoming fearless. And they're working. And they live right in the slums. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh! So mm-hmm. it just depends on where we're going. It, it's very hard to not just go, wow! It, it, I, wow. I do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever don't, wow. then you know, I slap myself. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, this is such oh. a privilege and an honor. Seriously, yes. yes, to be able to be used in with to spread the gospel. He's amazing. That's why we're here. He always is amazing. He's (laughs) an amazing God. He is. We need to take a break. Okay. (laughs) I agree. He's amazing. Don't go away. We've got a lot more with Mary Pat Gokey and Frontline Ministries after these words. You're listening to our community.